Meiki is back with an ultra-fast menu prime lens. This is their new 35mm f0.95. Is it good or is just another paperweight? Hi, welcome back. It's Jimmy Chang here from Web35. I'm slowly expanding my reviews into Nikon's APS-C Z cameras. And you may have seen some of my reviews already. And today I have Makey's ultra-fast 35mm f0.95 for my Nikon ZFC. And just if you're curious, Makey also offered this lens in other mounts, including Michael Four Thirds. Over the past few years, I've reviewed a fair few Makey lenses for Michael Four Thirds. So I am pretty familiar with the characteristics and build quality of their lenses. So let's have a quick overview of the lens and then go straight down to business and look at the image quality of this lens. Well, as much as we take it for granted from Chinese lens manufacturers these days, Meiki continues the tradition by offering this affordable ultra-fast 35mm lens with a full metal construction. And indeed, it is a pretty hefty one too. Apart from the rather yeah, cheap looking and cheap feeling plastic lens cap, the rest feels very premium and certainly looks more expensive than its asking price. The lens barrel has a similar silhouette as the old Leica 50mm Summilux. In other words, well, pretty good looking. <laughs> Bow focus and aperture are silky smooth with the right amount of resistance for that precise adjustment. And with that said, the aperture ring is, well, clickless, which I dislike as a photographer, because this lens is more a photographic tool than a video lens, which I'll come to that later. But overall, it is a very well put together and executed lens. And more than worth than asking price again. At 380 gram, Makey's 35mm f0.95 isn't exactly a light lens. The notorious light construction of the ZFC isn't exactly a perfect match for any metal lenses for that matter. But in terms of proportion, well, this lens is perfect. Just look at this, at least physically on any lightweight APS-C Nikon Z cameras. Before I show you any of my brick wall tests and sample images, I would like to say that Makey lenses has long been on my radar when it comes to vintage looking photographic tools. And this 35mm f0.95 exactly fits the description. As you can see, general sharpness is good, perhaps a little soft at wide open due to halo smearing the details, and low contrast decreases the perceived sharpness. Study harder and you'll find that this lens has the ability to resolve, just not very obvious. If you want to see all the black and white and all the details, stop down to 2.8. Peak sharpness arrives at 5.6 and diffraction will cheapen your lens at f11. Edge performance is as expected. Little soft at 0.95, but I will go as far as saying <laughs> blurred. Things don't improve until f8, unfortunately, which is a little subpar by any standard. And stop down again, you will hit diffraction threshold. This doesn't give you any room for creativity if you need all the sharpness across the entire frame. Flare resistance is on par with any Chinese lenses I've reviewed in the past at similar price point. The lack of included lenses won't help anything either but at least you can buy one that fits this lens pretty cheaply if you want. Vignette isn't particularly bad with Makey's Bulk Monster, considering it's a rather big 0.95 aperture lens. However, dark corners are visible between 0.95 and 1.4, and you need to at least F2 to get rid 90% of the darkness. Consistent luminous frame achieved from 2.8 onwards. Despite being marketed as a standard focal length for APS-C camera, distortion is a little too much. Barrel distortion is visible at 1.5 meter, and you need to step further away to get better results. However, it's not severe and can be corrected easily in post. As mentioned earlier, I often refer Makey lenses as modern vintage lenses because of their renderings. And this 35mm 0.95 is no exception. 
But I do like the filmic rendering coming up from this lens, especially when shooting at 0.95. Bokeh is creamy and fluffy like cotton candy. This is perhaps the best SS of this lens, and I like it a lot. And here are a set of sample photos I took during my family holiday during last month. See for yourself and let me know if you like them. Despite having clickers aperture ring, I wouldn't recommend this lens for video use because of the heavy focus breathing phenomenal when you rack focus. Being a 0.95 lens means that depth of field is very shallow, even on an APS-C camera. So breathing will appear more exaggerated than it would in my Go 4 Thirst, for instance, unless you plan to film this lens stopping down to 2.8 or something smaller. At $250, Makis 35mm f0.95 is very well priced. But as competitions heat up within all Chinese lens manufacturers, there are other options, unless you are a Makis fan. Perhaps it will be a better full frame lens than an APS-C or Bicol Four Thirds, because cropping the image circle means that any optical flaw will be exaggerated or magnified, exposed to nerdy scrutiny. But technicality aside, I do enjoy the image it creates. Yeah, I particularly like the filmic draw and the bokeh quality. So, what's my verdict? Should you avoid it, consider it, shortlist it, or just go ahead and buy it? Well, I think you should consider it. It is not a bad lens, certainly not the worst lens I've seen, but it doesn't offer any standout features or quality that would make me buy this lens for the price. However, you shouldn't avoid it, and perhaps look at other similar focal lengths from other manufacturers and you will see. Even if you have spent a little bit more, you may get a much better lens. And remember though, 35mm is a pretty useful focal length on APC cameras. So you may want to invest more, just a little bit more to get a better performing alternative. And I would, however, avoid a Michael Forthers option for the price. You can get a brand new and stunningly sharp high-performing Olympus 45mm 1.8 with autofocus, sharper, lighter, and way more compact. There you go. I hope you yeah, enjoyed today's video and let me know your thoughts about Makis 35mm 0.95. Do you have one and what's your experience with the lens? And would you consider this lens for your photography? Let's have a chat in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and you know what to do now. Thumb if you love this video and sub if you want to stay in touch with all things photography filmmaking, and of course, lens reviews. Peace. Yeah, I'm also testing the new mic. This is a uh, Hollyland Lock Max. Uh, yeah, this, it's been around for a little while now, for a few months, and uh, so I'm testing it at the moment. How does it sound? Let me know in the comment section below as well. Uh, but So welcome to my bonus sessions. And first of all, I would like to uh, say that APS-C cameras are still here. You know, we can see Fujifilm's doing well, and so is Nikon ZFC. Um, they are brilliant formats, you know, just like Michael Ford. They're just an other option if you really uh, want something kind of in between, not as big as full frame, but a little bit bigger than Michael Ford. Third. And uh, yeah, there are options. So there's no right or wrong in format, just whether you need it or not. But anyway, ZFC is what I have here. And you may be wondering where I'll be getting the ZF because I already received a ton of messages asking me, Will you be upgrading to the ZF? You know, it's full frame and this and that. And uh, it is tempting. <laughs> I'm tempted. <laughs> uh, we just we just have to see, wait and see, because I would like to have a silver version, but I don't mind a black version either. Uh, so we just have to uh, 
uh, see what my options are in the future because what I like about it not only is full frame because I do have a tech chart um, uh, autofocus adapter that will enable any of my Leica M mount lenses into autofocus because I do have a bunch of Leica lenses that I can reuse if I have a full frame camera. I mean, I can use it on the APS-C, but you know, because it's cropped, so that means everything's magnified and uh, or cut. So uh, uh, so that means that you know my 35 mil is not 35; it's more like 50. And then my ultra wide, you know, 28 will become 35, 37. So yeah, I would like to have the full frame option just to maintain all the focal lengths that I had uh, with my Leica lenses. Um, so that would be cool. That would be cool. And certainly a lot a way cheaper than getting a new Leica. That's for sure. Uh, and then I'll have autofocus too. <laughs> anyway, that's another day uh, a topic and i uh, don't want to discuss that right now uh, but yeah setup is definitely quite interesting for me especially it has all the photographic features and the latest generations of uh, processor from nikon so that could be quite an interesting option but uh, let's go back to APS-C because i do have a bunch of new lenses coming for me to test and review and they are very exciting i'm not going to review what they are because they're not announced yet and uh, it certainly certainly looks very expensive well, not almost expensive. I don't know the pricing yet, but very exciting, very exciting. Another thing is also that uh, we can see uh, just very briefly, the Chinese man lens manufacturers are definitely stepping up. They are now slowly moving away from manual lenses to autofocus. It's almost like an evolution, you know? And uh, so we are starting to see more and more of autofocus lenses from China now. And they are all very well-performing lenses too. Like the Viewtrock 75 that I just reviewed for the ZFC, that's a brilliant lens. That is, a, to me, actually, is really, really good lens. I know 75 on the on the crop is kind of becoming uh, uh, like a 100, 100, 110 kind of full frame focal length, which is quite long for my standard. I would like to re, you know, kind of retain as 85, 90, again, that sort of mark, uh, but it isn't. But even that is still a very, very good lens at 1.2 aperture, ultra sharp, uh, wide open performance is brilliant. And for like a third of the price from, you know, full frame equivalent in the Nikon, yeah, it's a no brainer really. Um, so more of these lenses are coming up from China now. And I'm really surprised, you know, like T even TT Artisans is doing that. Uh, I, I, you know, I just cannot wait to see what's going to happen in the next few years because so far we're really struggling with autofocus lenses from China. I mean, they're Yung North or Michael Forther, but they're not exactly high performing yet. Um, that I'm waiting to see if anyone would do something for Michael Forther as well. And I'm hoping these manufacturers who are sending me the lenses for all the uh, uh, APS-C formats will eventually move into Michael Forther as well as full frame. So uh, yeah, it's setting time for Chinese lens manufacturers and I can't wait to see all of them in the next two to three years. Uh, let me know your thoughts about this as well, because uh, this would definitely help us consumers and photographers alike uh, who may want to experiment other renderings, other performing lenses from other countries rather than just Japan. Uh, yeah, I think only Japan really. You know, Europe doesn't really do too much of autofocus lenses. Most of them are manual focus lenses. And, uh, but yeah, certainly exciting. Well, anyway, keep creating. Keep shooting. Let me know your thoughts on everything that I just said, and it'll be nice to have a nice conversation in the future. And don't forget to join me live on Wednesdays, uh, 3 p.m. London time, uh, our Red Hot Talk episodes, because they are quite fun. You know, you can join in the conversations on what we have with other community members there. Uh, yeah, we have a group gathering every week. Uh, yeah, join us. Have fun. <laughs> anyway, see you all next time. Bye for now. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>